suburban Seattle man on trial for the murder of his wife. More than seven years after her death, the victim's family is hoping they will finally get justice. ABC's Neil Karlinski has that story. In a Seattle courtroom Monday, a mother unflinchingly took on her daughter's alleged murderer, the same man she once called family, but has pursued for years as a cold-blooded killer. I just said, he murdered my daughter. I have cried my brains out every day for seven years. If he can't take a, being confronted by a 72-year-old woman, well, I'm sorry, but he's not much of a man if he can't handle that. Nicole Peets vanished from home in 2006. At the time, her husband, David Peets, seen here in the couple's happy wedding video, was among those talking to reporters. Try and focus on what we can do to be finding her so that we, you know, so you don't let your mind go to the bad places. Her body was later found in a wooded area, strangled. Police were interested in David as a suspect early on. They say he was unhappy with his marriage, frustrated with his job, and having affairs. But it would be six long years before they would arrest him, claiming to have built a case on circumstantial evidence and DNA. Defense attorneys call the case flimsy without a single eyewitness to a crime. It's not based on any direct evidence, and it's not going to show that David Peets took Nicole's life. Prosecutors say the case will take time to prove, just as they say David was methodical in covering up the crime. Nicole's mother testified about her daughter's funeral and something she says David told her. He put his arms around me and said, I didn't think you'd take it so hard. David Pete celebrated his 36th birthday in court Monday. He has pleaded not guilty. For Good Morning America, Neil Karlinski, ABC News, Seattle. We're going to bring in ABC's chief legal affairs anchor, Dan Abrams, right now and, and explain why it took so long to bring this to trial. Well, obviously, they didn't think they had enough evidence up till recently. And I think the two things have happened with regard to new technology, uh, A, with regard to cell phones and B, with regard to DNA. So they've now been able to better pinpoint where a crucial phone call was made that the authorities say is incriminating. And B, with regard to DNA evidence, they say they were able to link him to her car in a way that they might not have been able to do previously. So some new technology has helped them confirm what were their suspicions, because they've been suspicious of him since very early on in the investigation. So what you said helps, but the length of time. Does that affect the case, though, in any kind of way? Yeah, it's not helpful. Uh, you don't want to wait six or seven years. Memories start to fade. People switch jobs. Evidence is lost. But there have been a lot of cases where it does take some time. This is not an easy case. How strong do you think yeah, this case is? Yeah, I mean, is? look, this is, they believe that you've got to put the puzzle together uh, to convict here. Mm -hmm. It's not a single piece of evidence. But I'll tell you, of all the pieces of evidence, the one that struck me the most was the one that when her body was found, she was still wearing a dental retainer. Why is that so important? Because remember, his account is that he sees her asleep at midnight, and that's the last time he sees her. Theoretically, someone abducted her, abducted her with the dental retainer, and I think it's a very crucial piece of evidence for prosecutors to say it wasn't a stranger, it was him. And we'll see what happens coming yep. up. All right, Dan, All right, thanks very much.